and good evening welcome to Dave's tackle box it is Sunday the 16th of March 2014 it's nine o'clock and it's me and it's him hi Dave hello Bonnie lad you alright yeah not bad at all not bad at all uh, right I'll start off with the apology for uh, having to bail out to do my show uh, a week ago it was one of those uh, unforeseen and uh, circumstance things that uh, unavoidable circumstances as well uh, so I do apologise, especially uh, to those of you who were hoping to see some footage from Brussels. But I'm here tonight with the footage from Brussels. So we've got, actually got quite a bit of that, haven't we, Dave? Yeah, yeah, he is. He's de you're definitely here, you're just there, because I, I can am. see you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I should hold up a newspaper, shouldn't I, to prove it's today? Well, it is today, because I'm here. Yeah, fair point. <laughs> That's conclusive, that. Nobody can argue with that. Uh, yes, so we're going to be uh, having a watch of that and having a little natter. And um, and uh, and then we've got a couple of other things. Uh, this stealth juice has been causing comment, hasn't it? I believe. Yes, yeah, just a bit. So, some more more, com more comment from some than others. It has to be said. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got some. I got some. I actually, uh, I, I I actually, I confess, I didn't see your show on Thursday, uh, but I ordered this before your show went out. Anyway, uh, I ordered it at the airport uh, on Thursday, and it arrived yesterday morning. I've took the top off and to, to check it doesn't smell too obnoxious, and right. it smells like exactly what I ordered, vanilla. But I have not yet tried it at all. So I've got a bottle of this and an Evod, and a bit later on we're going to see. We're, we're going to have a go I'm, and, I'm and see what that's all about. I'm looking forward to that, but I really am. <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't know. Um, uh, you know what I'm like with juice I don't like for a start. So, I mean, that's the first <laughs> obstacle we've got to get across. But it's vanilla. And I, I smoke kind of vanilla -y things. Perhaps not quite this sweet. but Because uh, he only had, uh, so I think it was about five or six different flavours to choose from when I looked. But, uh, yeah. but hey, can't, can't fault the delivery. Because I didn't even go for the expensive delivery. Right. And I ordered it Thursday afternoon in uh, Zurich Airport. And it arrived on Saturday morning for like two quid postage or something. Well, you kind of knocked that one. So that, that ain't bad. Uh, but we're going to give that a whirl. So, uh, and, and like I say, I'm not going to try and preempt it because I've no idea whether it's going to be any good, whether they're going to like it or what. So, because that's the way we roll, eh, Dave? Oh, hey, you've got no idea. <laughs> uh, so, so heavily scripted tonight, you wouldn't believe it. It's so well scripted tonight that we forgot the titles. Shall I start with the titles? Yeah, I would if I were you. See you in a minute. And away we go. Okay, right, so let's start with the Brussels thing because that seems like a good place to start. It's, it's a good place to come away from. At this stage, it's not so much news at this stage as history. <laughs> well, history is the news of yesterday, you know. And, and in this case, the news of last week. <laughs> but, you know, better late than never, eh? Um, Right, for those of you who are wondering what on earth I'm banging on about, uh, you may recall in uh, previous uh, shows I mentioned that Nikki Sinclair, who is the West Midlands, she's an a West Midlands MEP yes. for the We Want a Referendum Now party. Okay, now um, 
Nikki, as an MEP, gets a certain allowance to bring people to visit the European Parliament. All MEPs get this, apparently. It's a way of, I guess, the EU trying to persuade people that they're not some mysterious organisation that sits hundreds of miles away and messes with your life. Uh, and that you can... Yeah, 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 come on, come on. Sorry. Balanced, balanced, um, unbiased coverage here. So stick with it. <laughs> so so uh, the idea is, I think, just to make people feel involved so they can see what the EU's all about and all the rest of it. But uh, Nikki being Nikki and not being the quiet, shy, retiring type uh, and being a big supporter of uh, Vapors and our cause, decided to fill a coach up uh, with Vapors and take us over to Brussels so we could protest outside their front door. Uh, it's an opportunity that uh, was too good to be missed. Now, I do want to say, because uh, because I've commented on VTTV already, um, uh, just after the trip, uh, that, uh, that, that there weren't as many vapours on the coach as we would have liked. But I'm going to show you now, I'm not, this footage that I've got is a little bit random. I've tried to edit it and join it up as much as I can. It's a bit like a diary of the two days. Because we went out on the Tuesday, came back late on the Wednesday night. And pretty much everything happened on the Wednesday. So there, was, there wasn't much opportunity to set shots up and all the rest of it. It was kind of things were happening and you point the camera at it. So like some of the camera footage is a little bit bouncy and the sound's not as good as you might want it to be. But I think... I think it gives a really fair reflection of how the two days went and uh, and how everybody, in, I think, enjoyed it. I certainly did. So, without further ado, I'll run the VT. Dave goes to go and make a cuppa, do whatever he wants to do, because it's, it's getting up for 20 minutes long. And uh, if you were there, hopefully you'll see yourself. If you weren't, you'll know what we were up to. Shall I roll it, Dave? Yeah, go for it. Good to you. Too. As a vapour, I find the Tobacco Products Directive that was passed in Strasbourg on the 26th of February of this year utterly unacceptable. I don't like what it says, I don't like the way it was put together, and I'm quite keen to take any opportunity I can to make sure that people know what I think about it. So when Nikki Sinclair, who is an MEP for the West Midlands region, um, was offering places on a coach to Brussels earlier this week. I was all over that. Nikki arranged free transport, uh, accommodation in Brussels, and access to the European Parliament buildings um, with talk of a little demonstration outside the European Parliament main entrance. Uh, I had to be there and I had to take my camera with me. So what follows is like the story of a couple of days on the 4th or 5th of March 2014. Hope you enjoy it. So Tuesday the 4th of March 2014 saw us assembling at some ungodly hour in the centre of Birmingham waiting for a coach. Um, everybody was a little tired, some people had travelled a long way already I think. Uh, so it was a fairly quiet trip down uh, to the, uh, the, the Channel Tunnel. Uh, it was a non-vaping coach which, uh, which was interesting. So we're actually on, uh, it's not the Euro Star, it's Le Shuttle, apparently, uh, my best friend Jackson's. And uh, we've just started moving, uh, so we're about to go into the tunnel sort of any moment now, I think. And I, I just thought I'd take the chance to ask a couple of the guys uh, what they're hoping to achieve. Hopefully we're going to try and get the European Parliament to listen to us, and we're trying to go and hopefully promote the fact that EFBI, if we get enough signatures as well with it, that we will get the chance that was never offered before. Well, last night I um, went with my girlfriend to um, a graveyard to see her um, her dad on the anniversary of, of his death. And um, as I was standing there in the dark, I was thinking, you know, this isn't about us. This isn't about, you know, so we can blow flavoured steam out. You know, it's to save all of these people every year from dying from smoking. And, um, you know, we've discovered these and we need to protect the right of everyone else to be able to discover them. 
I'm uh, Liam Bryan, and um, maybe standing as an MP in the 2015 elections. Europe thinks they've had the last word in this. We're going across to Brussels now to tell them that they haven't. We're going to have the last word. We're going to make enough noise and enough fuss to hopefully change this ridiculous legislation. Well, I'm uh, going to Brussels to uh, show my support for the, uh, the cause. Uh, obviously last week the uh, European Parliament voted to uh, approve tough regulations and um, I feel, in my opinion, that over the next 10 years, if it goes ahead, hundreds of thousands of people could uh, die as a result of not being able to use these. The European Parliament have had many years to sort out the cigarette problems. If they'd put as many hours and as much money into researching cigarettes, I think they could have done something sensible. What they've done is a very, bit, uh, very badly put together some legislation which is not particularly effective. And certainly as someone who used to smoke a lot and doesn't anymore, I don't touch cigarettes at all, I feel quite strongly about it. I think that they're interfering with something which is well researched and the research is ongoing to a greater degree than cigarettes. And my concern is that the motivation is not one of health, but more about where the money lies. And that is why I've come. And that's the reason for coming on this trip. Vape on, guys. And finally, we reached the hotel. And here I am in my hotel room. Uh, it was a long journey and it with a very early start for a lot of people a lot of people traveled a long way before they even got on the coach in birmingham so uh so the journey was a little bit subdued in many ways um uh, we were told we couldn't vape on the coach but it didn't stop many of us to be honest um and the crossing was strange if you've ever been on the sort of freight coach part of the uh the Channel Tunnel Crossing, uh, you'll know what I mean. It was quite a bizarre experience really, but we're here. We made it, it's currently uh, quarter past seven local time. Uh, just gonna sort of uh, recharge the batteries a bit, literally, as well as figuratively. And um, then we're gonna go out and find somewhere to have something to eat. Uh, and be ready for a bright and early start in the morning where we're gonna be doing the European Parliament tour and um, and then saying our little piece and having a little demonstration outside the parliamentary buildings. Uh, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Nikki Sinclair at this stage. We haven't actually seen Nikki yet, so I'm not sure if she's already in Brussels or what. Uh, but I gather we'll be seeing her tomorrow. Um, I'd like to say to a huge thank you to her for uh, giving us all the opportunity to get over here. Um, next time you see me, will likely be on the way to the Parliament tomorrow morning. See you then. So having uh, hung around outside one of the visitor buildings for a while, eventually we went inside and uh, we had a presentation by a Cypriot called George and by Nikki Sinclair herself. A very informative session telling us how the European Parliament is structured, uh, how all the different uh, political groups work. And um, 
and an opportunity to ask questions, uh, say why we were here, and I, I thought very informative. And uh, that went on for, I don't know, about an hour. And then eventually we left and headed across the street to the uh, main European Parliament building entrance. We're currently stood right outside what I think is the main entrance to the European Parliament building. It certainly looks very grand. And as you can see, there's a bunch of people vaping behind me. Uh, Nikki Sinclair has very kindly provided us with a bunch of banners with uh, worthwhile messages. Um, it's a bit quiet around here. I haven't seen Linda McCavan yet, unfortunately. Um, we're going to be here for a little while. Hopefully some people will come and ask us what we're up to. That would be kind of nice. Um, then we're going to go inside and uh, I'll see if they'll let the, take the camera in. We have to kind of smuggle it into the last part of the building, but uh, let's see how we go. And I'll get a word with some of the guys that are here protesting today as well. If they want to be responsible for the death of hundreds of thousands of people in the next decade, then yeah. Yes, Lies in hell before profit and wealth. 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 What do we want the EU to do? Leave our East alone. What do we want the EU to do? Leave our East alone. Are you happy with the EU? No. <laughs> Has this debate been democratic? No. What do we want the EU to do? Leave our East alone. Health before wealth. 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 I thought it was very good. We, we, we got a net result, I think, uh, with uh, Nicky Sinclair on board um, with our, our case oh. and our arguments. Um, and everyone knows um, uh, the, the European Parliament are trying to ban uh, vaporising, which is not a good thing, and we know that. Uh, and that's why we're bringing the fight here uh, at the European Parliament here in Brussels. Everybody knows that uh, cigarettes uh, are used as a stress-free thing, but uh, they use a, a cigarette to de-stress. What we're saying is that these vaporizers replace that cigarette. It's safer to use. It's not harmful. It's safer to use. And please do not ban this from our use. Uh, make sure that you keep the freedom going, uh, individual freedom to de-stress whenever we want, when we want. On the health issues, I've had a heart attack. I've had a stroke. Uh, my doctor's over the moon that I'm vaping. Um, who's right? Them in there or my doctor? And then we were in the European Parliament main buildings. Um, quite bizarrely really, walking around the corridors vaping um, in the debating chambers, perhaps one of the ones that, that, that was used while they were trying to ban what we were doing. Um, a little bit surreal in many ways. Uh, but we uh, we got the chance in one of the debating chambers to uh, interrogate Nikki a bit more on her thoughts about the TPD uh, as well as play around with some of the buttons and microphones and stuff. At 10.49 local time, when that information came through, that there was a split vote, that was 40, really 11th hour, literally 11th hour decision, that was 41 minutes prior to the voting actually starting. So there was no chance for me or whoever else to go and lobby these MEPs and say, yeah, actually, this is different, you should vote, you should not listen to your group, you should vote separately on this. There was no look. So they make it look, by doing that last minute change, 11th hour change, that they have given a separate vote, that they did, you know, they did allow a democratic vote, but they didn't, because there was no time to lobby. And we didn't even debate it in Strasbourg that week. 
There was no debate. There was no debate to even inform MEPs about this. And, and, and I don't believe that's, that's, that passes as a democratic debate or a democratic vote. With, with the TPD, they said their main aim is to drop smoking uh, prevalence by 2% over a 10 year period. Yeah, that's the whole entire objective of the TPD. There was a thing that came out recently, it was a Philip Morris report, and they said that last year e cigarettes uh, resulted in a 7% decline in, in tobacco sales, in cigarette sales, industry wide, not just Philip Morris, industry wide. And they predicted that that would fall again by another 8% in the next year. And so I can't understand that. No one in the European Commission or the Parliament of that kind of brought that kind of thing up because that's, uh, that's a 15% drop in two years rather than a 2% drop. Do you get what I mean? It, it seemed to me that like, no one really grasped the facts in in. in during that vote, you get, I mean, the main parties, like yourself and Martin Callahan, yeah, you, you, you looked at the facts, you understood them. But a lot of the others just seemed to, it just seemed to me that none of that was brought Common to the Common sense in the EU, whatever next. They've actually got their own television studio, which is just behind me. And a few of the guys are going to go and be interviewed um, to make a program uh, in support of Nikki Sinclair's campaign that they're launching, uh, which is called SOS eSync, I believe. I perhaps should have been paying more attention. Um, but they've got some pretty impressive kit behind. So I'm getting some funny looks. <laughs> standing in front of this sort of endless wall of MEPs pigeonholes and uh, I'm going to hand over to Mark Shaw in a moment and he's going to explain what we're doing. Basically what we're doing is we're going to put a letter into all of the ME UK MEPs uh, on regarding what, what letter they received is down to what way they voted on the TPD. If they voted in our favour, then they get a nice thank you letter. If they abstained, we're putting in a letter to ask why they abstained. And if they voted against, we're putting in a letter that's, that basically expresses our disappointment. And hopefully we'll get them all to engage to Twitter via the hashtag SOSE6. Uh, basically, Nikki's organised this, which is very good. There's the letter there, and with the SOS e hashtag. So hopefully we'll be able to follow some of their responses on Twitter via, that, via using that hashtag. Very good initiative. And these are all their personal mailboxes. Yeah, just... Stephen Hughes. And that was about it. We had to rush back to the coach <laughs> because the driver was fretting about catching the train. Um, but as you can see by the uh, the expressions on people's faces in that video, we did have a thoroughly good time. We had a bit of a laugh. But the reason we were there obviously was quite serious. We were there just to let people know that we haven't gone away. Just by putting the letters in the MEP's pigeonholes, just in case they thought this was over with and they haven't got to listen to us anymore, they'll now know a little bit better at least. Um, so will what we did last week change the outcome of the TPD? Not on its own, of course it won't. But there's something that we all can try and do. Uh, I want to mention the EFVI. You saw it on one of the banners and the protest there. That's the European Free Vaping Initiative. Uh, you need to get yourself along to EFVI.eu. 
and on that website you'll see details of a campaign involving the European Citizens Initiative and what that basically means is we have to get a million people to sign up between now and November of 2014 and if we do that then we're, uh, we're given a hearing uh, in front of the EU Parliament, in front of the uh, Commission uh, to tell them what we think is wrong with the uh, TPD as it stands. If you're a vapor, if you know a vapor, if you care about people's right to vape, uh, you need to be signing that. So efvi.eu is where you want to be going. Um, hopefully there'll be more trips like this to Brussels and if there are I definitely recommend that you get yourself on one. Uh, one last thank you to Nikki Sinclair and her team, specifically uh, Nicole and Gary who helped to smuggle the camera past security and to Nicole especially for making sure we all got there and back safely. Uh, fantastic opportunity, really glad I got to go. Um, thanks very much and uh, vape on everyone. Okay. <laughs> so if I just ask you, you know, why are you going to Brussels today? Well, last night I took my girlfriend to um, her father's grave. Um, it's the anniversary of her father's death. What's an AC? <laughs> not a cigarette. It's not tobacco. Good answer, I like it. Yeah, we don't want tobacco. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. You want it? Yeah. Shame you waved that piece of paper in front of the camera. Oh, one more time. Do it again. Do it again. Sorry, Daddy. Right. Our very own Linda McCurry. Ready? You got it? Go. And we're back in the room. Well, there you go. That was it. That was the video diary of the trip to Brussels. And I, I you know, I haven't watched that. I did that last week. And then I've just watched it back then uh, for the first time. And do you know what? That was a pretty accurate representation of what went on, I think. Um, we better do an ad break, you know, because it's nearly half past. Is it? Good break. It is, I. That's the thing with these long VTs. So uh, cool. we'll take a short break and we'll be back in about a minute and a half. of Dave's Tap Box. And welcome back. Right, okay, yeah, so that was Brussels, and it was great fun. Now, you, you went to Brussels on the Black Balloon protest, didn't you? Uh, that's one of the many trips, yes. Did you get to vape in the chamber? Um, I, di I didn't go on the Black Balloons, we didn't go in. Ah, okay, okay. It was uh, it was the visits after that, when uh, Sav and I were wandering in and around the boat. That sounds right, 
yeah. the, the rabbit warren where uh, all the MEPs live and and do their doings and what have you. And what about smoking if they feel like it, vaping if they feel like it. Yeah. Um, yes. Well, it's, it's funny because we were supposed to get, uh, uh, we were told, you know, oh, you'll be able to go and see what the office is, like Linda McCavan's office and all the rest of it. And uh, unfortunately it didn't happen. And I think that was down to two things. One was the fact that everywhere we went, we left a barrage of questions. So like the very first bit, uh, it's like a visitor's centre. Uh, like uh, you saw in the footage there, where there were some guys in suits, like holding the flags and stuff, yeah. Um, and, you know, and and that was there purely as a photograph opportunity, I think, for, for visitors. But they took yeah. us into a little room in that building, first of all. And there was a guy called George, uh, uh, who was from Cyprus. And he was a reporter, uh, but now works for the EU. And so he was doing a presentation. And he had the presentation with all these slides in it. I think he got to about like the third slide because of the barrage of questions. Mm. Um, I saw a question in chat saying, uh, you know, were there other people, other interested parties and not just vapors there? Yes, there were. Um, there were some uh, people uh, that, that were associated with other causes, like there was uh, some, some guys talking about Kashmir there. Uh, they popped up every now and then in the footage and what have you. Um, and uh, they, they, But generally, you know, a lot of those people were very pro uh nikki's party if you see what yes. i mean yeah yeah so like when they had a guy from the eu representing the eu stood in front of him they like kind of hit him with this barrage of questions um mark had a go a couple of times as well i think <laughs> <laughs> as you'd expect and uh, and you know when we were actually having a very informative debate uh the guy um was obviously sort of in favor of the eu but uh, was more than ready to admit that it's a long way from perfect, and you know, and and so, so he, he sort of uh, wasn't disagreeing with people. Sometimes he did, sometimes he didn't. You know, yeah. it was uh, it was a bit like the kind of political discussions you have in the pub. <laughs> and and to be honest with you, it was quite engrossing, but nothing to do with these things, obviously, at that stage. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and so we actually overran our allotted slot in there and got kicked out. Uh, so then we were late going for the protest and then lunch and the, the bit around the, the building. And then as you saw there in the footage, we uh, we, we were talking to Nikki for, for, well, until they threw us out. There was actually, uh, um, uh, I think it was an S&D um, conference taking place in that debating chamber that we were in. All right. So uh, we're pretty sure that McCavan was in there after we left. So we made sure we drank all the water and dropped sandwich bits of breadcrumbs and stuff all over it before we left. <laughs> but okay. then some officious looking woman came and actually threw us out in the end because we were we were there with Nikki setting the world to rights mm. and, and playing with the microphones and stuff, obviously, as you saw. But um, it, it was just thoroughly useful. Do you know what I mean? Just it, it kind of gave you a little insight into what makes the place tick, um, and uh, I mean, it, uh, w would you agree with me? I mean, regardless of what your 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 thoughts are on uh, on on the EU, um, it's an impressive place, isn't it? Oh, without a doubt. I mean, it, it, it's a huge, enormous building, and internally, like a rabbit warren. Um, but when you know. It's got a lot to recommend it in terms of the technology behind how the uh, the voting and everything takes place. But it's not human. It, it, it seems to have lost all the vestiges of humanity in that. And it becomes a conveyor belt for meddlesome legislation. And I, I do feel the need to get along there, get across there more often and make my voice heard loudly. And now that we know we can think i shall be doing that more often yeah because i mean that, that 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 occurred to me i mean <clears throat> just in case anybody didn't get where i'm sitting on this right you know forget your politics this is an opportunity to uh to understand your enemy <laughs> okay it's an opportunity to actually understand what makes this pla this whole organisation tick. I know that sounds ridiculous. We were only in that building for a few hours, um, and we left it in a real hurry because the the coach driver was having a strop about driving too many hours and missing the train or something. I don't know. Um, and um, 
uh, but but it just gives you I, I had a sense of just how small I was in this entire process you know uh, Nikki filmed uh, the, uh, the, the the footage with um, with Blaze and Nathan and Sarah Yes, uh, which course. you can see on YouTube. If you go, if you just search for Nikki Sinclair Vapor or something, you, you'll see that uh, where I was, that that television studio was in the background. They had this like booth thing with like fixed cameras, and there's you know there's a sound guy and a camera guy sat there permanently. And MEPs can come sit there, have the conversation. Nikki did a couple of those while we were there. She did one for for, for the uh, Kashmir cause that she was uh, uh, supporting. In actual fact, I actually read uh, the other day, I think it was Friday, uh, the guy, we didn't know it at the time, but the guy that was, came on the coach with us is actually standing as an MEP for Nikki's party. Oh, right. So so uh, I, I I haven't looked, but I bet you, because uh, she, she did one of those little uh, video boo things, that she called it, with with, with him first, and, and a, the, a couple of people that were in their little party. Um, so I bet that's on YouTube as well. If anybody's interested in that, just just thought I'd mention it. But then she did the vaping one, but sort of sat behind where the cameras were. If you if if you've seen that video, when you see Nikki and uh, our guys sat there chatting about e-cigs and vaping in general and what they think of the EU's policy on it, sort of behind where that camera was, there's an actual like television studio. And they had, uh, I mean, some of the gear in there was just absolutely... Could, did you see that when you were there? Yes, I did, and I'm bloody disappointed I, nobody brought it. It was incredible. <laughs> you know, they, they were filming something, they were streaming something live, you know, and they got, like, six cameras on the go. Six cameras, and that did... Uh, six camera operators, you know, and these are the big bloody cameras, you know. Um, and then they had another camera on a boom, which was, and then the, all the people taking part in the discussion were sat round a table. It was like a round table discussion, and there were cameras. There. And, and I tell you what, it, it just um, it makes you realise, uh, in a lot of sense, just just how little one issue is to your yeah. average MEP. Yeah, so, I mean they, they, they deal with stuff day in day out, and they're changing uh, files. Sometimes by the minute, how to keep track of it all, I just don't know. Um, you know, I've got a lot of respect for them in that respect, but it's it's impossible to govern, impossible to legislate when you've got that much on your plate, and when you've got, in my view, bloody idiots coming up with stupid legislative proposals. You're I'm going to mention charges, or olive oil, <laughs> or seeds. A single phone charger for every phone? That's that's a recipe for I, see, I couldn't cool believe that. I couldn't bite my lip either when Catherine Bearder tweeted that the other day about the phone charger. That's another discussion. We'll get on to that one. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I guess what I'm trying to say is that, you know, um, although that cause for, for me and the other vapors uh, uh, that, that were there... Is like has become almost all-consuming over the last twelve months, and he's one of the most important things uh, in our lives recently. Uh, it's you just just gives you a little bit of perspective the amount of stuff that that they're trying to do. Let me use that language because I agree with Dave. You know, I don't think they can do all the things they try to do. To be honest with you, and they end up buggering most of them up as a consequence. Uh, and Esigs is a cracking example of it. But uh, it kind of, it gave me some perspective. I came back, I, I sat uh, very quiet on the coach on the way home, contemplating. Not sure I came to any real meaningful conclusions, but uh, it made me realise what we're up against, you know. Mm. Um, now, that said, um, I, I, huge respect um, to the guys who held the signs and were chanting outside the entrance. Looking at it in that little um, uh, little sequence that I did with people chanting and everything, right, um, is one thing. To actually be there, it's actually quite intimidating. It is. People are walking past and laughing and wondering what the hell's going on. Some people stopped and asked. Some people just shook their heads as they walked past, you know. It was very, very intimidating. So I've got to say a huge thank you to Nikki for, for, for actually, uh, you know, sort sort of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for for being the ringleader, if you like, for orchestrating that? Yes. Um, and but but I want to say an even bigger thank you to the guys that stood there and did it. 
You know, you will have my respect always because that was pretty scary. Uh, it really was. I've been on protests and demonstrations and stuff before, but only when there's been like three or four times that many people at least. <laughs> you know, yes. that wasn't many people there and they made a lot of noise considering and they got a lot of, they made everybody look. The local camera, uh, you saw, I think you saw it in the footage there a couple of times. Uh, there was a local camera crew out there asking what was going on and all the rest of it. So it, it got noticed. Uh, so respect and well done, guys. Indeed. Just wanted to say Indeed. that. I will echo that 100%. Because, yeah. let's face it, that took some balls. Simple it does. That. I mean, the thing is, well, though, as you say, it's amazing the number of passers by that stop the talk and are supportive. That's, that's one of the big things that comes out of all of these things for me. Yeah. And, and I think that's important. Hearts and minds. Yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely right cheerleading somebody's just said yeah pretty much yeah. so um and uh yeah but but like where was i going with this i kind of went off at a slight tangent there because i get quite sort of passionate about this sort of stuff to be honest with you um what i wanted to say was to follow up on dave's point about you know we need to go again right now the reality is between us just us vapors the reality is that the majority of vapors on that coach and uh, and and uh, huge respect to Twigglet and uh, and Mark Shaw, mm -hmm. who got on the train and met us in Brussels because it didn't make sense to come up to Birmingham and everything. Yeah, um, but uh, the majority of the vapors on that coach weren't actually from the West Midlands. Nathan and a bunch of his buddies drove up from South Wales. Mm -hmm. uh, Sprotty came from wherever it was Grantham, I think he said. Somewhere up that way. Right. Uh, I'm not in that constituency. I'm in the East Midlands. So Nicky, uh, basically, uh, I think if it had just been West Midlands, uh, you know, it would have been pretty poorly represented. And now having been on it, right, I'm going to start uh, contacting my MEPs and saying, hey, do something similar. You know? Gillis, Gillis has just pointed out in chat, and this is the measure of Nicky Sinclair, Nicky wants the UK out of Europe so is promoting something that will put her out of a job that's, yeah. <laughs> that's a very very valid point now I, I'd, I've never really got into my personal politics on the EU and stuff but let's be honest if you know me if you watch these shows you can guess them right I used an analogy the other day which said me voting to leave the EU would be like a turkey voting for Christmas I wouldn't have any work <laughs> OK, so there you go. There's 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 where I stand on this whole referendum, uh, the, the, the debate, whatever. So my politics are about as far as I, you can get from Nikki's. OK, and it has just not been an issue. She's backing our cause unconditionally. Mm hmm. So because um, I have read a few comments about serving her own political agendas and what have you. Duh. They're politicians, of course they are, you know. But here's somebody who has taken a cause, believes in it, and is promoting it. Simple as that. And that's a very valid point, you know. Um, um, you know, if 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 Nikki gets a referendum, and the referendum says we leave the EU, she's actually put herself out of a job. So, isn't it a shame that all the tobacco controllers didn't take the same stance? Well, well quite. Yes. Yes, absolutely right. And if I can just make a comment on something else I've just seen in chat, the idea of me in a mini skirt and pom poms leading the no. <laughs> no. This is not a picture anybody wants to see. The butt crack of dawn is bad enough. <laughs> so just being on this way, no. Aside from which, I would need elastic bands just above the knee on one leg to keep everything in place. TMI. <laughs> We're going to take the second break now. I know it's a bit close to the first one, but that's what happens when you squeeze everything into the second half of a show. I'm going to take another break. We'll come back uh, and we'll have a go at this stealth juice, shall we? Yes, that'll yes. be good. Looking forward to that. End of part two. Oh, 
sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. in Yorkshire for your ACP. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-Alexa.co.uk. iVeber and iVeber-Alexa.co.uk approach sponsors of VeberTrails.tv. And welcome back. Right, I almost missed my cue there. I actually did miss the cue, but you know, uh, they'll never know. It, ha uh, it happens to a lot. <laughs> yeah. I, in my defence, I was opening this evod. You were, you were. I'm, I'm, I'm testament to that. You were opening the right. evod. I have here a brand spanking new evod. Okay, and um, I'm going to fill it with this juice i got it from jack vapor it's called clear steam and it's 24 milligram um real vanilla flavor Ooh. and it smells like a cornetto <laughs> just one cornetto it smells a little bit custardy actually but uh, it smells of spicy wood, wood wouldn't it but um it's uh it's called real vanilla it's like i say it's 24 milligram which was the highest strength they did uh there wasn't a huge selection of flavors so i've picked one that i thought that i could probably tolerate mm. um and uh the whole idea behind this clear steam thing is that it doesn't produce any or it doesn't produce much vapor now, you guys, many of you guys watching this live will have the advantage over me uh, in as much as you probably saw VT talk on Thursday night, where I gather this was a topic of discussion, was it? <laughs> you couldn't see that. <laughs> right. Now, I've not managed to catch up on it. So uh, um, just before we went on, uh, Dave mentioned to me that, uh, uh, that he'd uh, passed some comment on it. Now, yeah, so what I'm going to do is, uh, Dave. Yes. Uh, just to prove that I'm not cheating, I'm going to keep the camera on both of us. Uh, okay. Would you like to uh, give everybody a little reminder of uh, of of how the discussion went and what the the over over overall opinion was of the idea of stealth juice? Whilst I fill this up and get it going. Indeed. Well, let me let me just say that both John Diver and I demonstrated that even with pure VG juice, using the length of draw and the depth of inhale. That was demonstrated on the video that Jack put out, YouTube can stealth, without necessarily buying clear steam. But what we were worried about was that the MHRA might just take a look at something like that and say, well, all e-juices should not produce vapour, because it would appear it's clouds of vapour that worry those who would control us. Right. And that's the situation... Yeah, I'm not sure we like that. We we did ask everybody that was uh, watching at the time to try taking a draw with their eyes closed and exhaling to see how that made them feel. And I'll I'll tell everybody in chat why not try that again. You too can share the experience. <laughs> okay, right. Now I have to say, right, um, I actually posted on UK Vapors the other day to this effect as well. I I've got conflicting thoughts on this right before i've tried it i just got a little bit on my tongue so i technically tried it now i can promise you there's nicotine in it um just while that sort of soaks into the wick a bit um 
I've, I've got conflicting thoughts, right? Because on, on one side, right, I can definitely use a juice that produces no vapour at all. Whether it's as this is as effective as what I currently do, because everybody knows that I vape where I want pretty much. And uh, that includes airplanes and all kinds of things, right? And nobody's ever asked me about it because nobody's ever seen me do it. So that's mm -hmm. it. Okay. Um, so, so on one side, I can see definitely see a use because every now and then, I, I was mentioned to you just before the show, didn't I? Like every now and then, I forget, and a cloud of vapor will arise. And I've been lucky so far. You sort of beat it back down, put the air vent on, and, and what have you, and and it's gone. Yeah, exactly. You got it right. So, uh, so if, if I'm watching a film or typing on the laptop or something like that, sometimes you forget to be stealthy. Uh, so something like this could have a use. Okay. Um, and whilst I would never advocate anybody sort of uh, breaking rules or laws or anything like that, there are a number of uh, popular drinking establishments where this kind of thing might come in useful too, yeah? Mother spoons. <laughs> Mother spoons. And, um, you know, so it, it's got a use. Now, on the other hand, it irritates me a little bit, OK? Partly because of the reasons you gave, but also it's a kind of ideological thing. Because there's mm -hmm. one one side of my brain is saying, why the hell should I hide what I'm doing? So that's kind of where I am. I sat on the fence. So I, I figured, well, I'll order some. Okay, I'll order some. And because uh, at the very least, we can see if it does what it claims it'll do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, Sorry, I've been, I've been stealthing all the way you've been talking. Right, well. With VG at 13 watts. Fair enough. This is... Uh, currently at eight and a half watts and this is an aspire in here which is pretty good for producing vapor isn't it yeah no and here this is this is a pg vg mix it's about a 70 70 30 mix if i remember right if you were watching uh dave's tackle box you'd have seen me mix this if you were watching the right show so um i'm just going to try this and then try and sort of be stealthy with it I'll, I'll do a normal drag and then i'll do one like i would if i didn't want to be seen why are you taking the drag? Gary Dibley has said, is a no vapor juice a little like using the tampon NRT? Um, I don't know. That's what I want to find out. <laughs> That's what I want to find out, Gary, to, 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 in all honesty. You saw there, uh, there was there was a visible quantity of vapour. Okay. The reality is, and I do use a, a, an Ego battery, so it's going to be lower wattage that, than I've got here and everything. But uh, this is, I'm guessing, the sort of thing that you demonstrated on Thursday night. Mm-hmm. Gone now. There wasn't any vapor at all. No. Nope. That's with the seventy thirty. So I do accept that you don't need a stealth juice to be stealthy. But as you saw, if I just start sort of vape normally, I took a three or four second drag. I'd say mm -hmm. that was. I should have used the evit and timed it, shouldn't I? Um, damn. Well, one time that feature would have been useful, and I never thought. <laughs> uh, right. So I'm going to put the new evod. With clear steam juice yeah. onto here, and uh, I'll just give it a little. Right, there was vapor. Definitely. That's a brand new coil. Right, brand new Evod. You saw me take it out of the packet. I did. Right, there's vapour, but what I would say is it dissipates, it's gone really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. Did you notice? I'd say yeah. I haven't got another straight P. Okay, it says on the label it's basically just PG and distilled water. The mix. I'm just wondering if I've got another PG only juice to hand. I don't think I do. They tend to all have some VG. Yeah, that's that's 50 50. And it's menthol, so I'm glad. Um, You know, this one's got glycerin in it. I ain't got anything that's not got glycerin in it. Yeah, you, you can see that the, there's vapour. But it disappears very, very, very quickly. So it would be easier to stealth with. That's going to dissipate so fast if you hold it in. Yes. It works. 
Oh, I'm, I'm absolutely certain it does. Well, I was sceptical. I guess it must have quite a low PG content. There's throat hit. There is throat hit there. And that that's a little bit lo lower nicotine content than the, the stuff, the, the, the mix that I was using to start with. Yes. But it does work. I, I have no doubt that it does what it says on the tin. I just don't like what it says on the tin. Just looking at chat there, there's a comment there uh, from Whip It Up. He's saying, won't use it on principle. And I do get that. I do understand. And right now, I don't know if I'm going to use this or not. Probably not, because I prefer the flavour of my regular juice. But, uh, you know, as to Jack Vapor, I say yes. I see that it it does what they say. Yes. Can't argue with that. I'm trying to produce lots of vapour with it now. And That's there is some... Take, take a normal length drag with it, Dave. I have been. I did five or six seconds a minute ago. It's gone. It disappears very, very quickly. Very, very, very quickly. And there is a throat hit there and there is a sensation. You can taste it. Flavours mm. there. Can you blow a vape ring? Vape ring before? I can't normally, so uh, I'm guessing not. <laughs> but that's impressive. That it just it's just gone. Give it one yeah. second after the exhale, and it's gone. It's um, it's based really on on the same sort of principle that we use for uh, in in venues for invisible vapor that still shows light beams curling through it yeah i think uh, Anne robinson and the uh, latest wink um and stuff like that that's it's it's there it would it probably would show up with a light behind it i'm not convinced i think if you just wait a second before you exhale That's gone. There's yes. nothing to see. There you go. Does what it says on the tin. Does what it says on the tin. So, like I say, the ideological argument is a whole different one. I think uh, a lot of people have, have, have hit the ideological argument and, and just the whole notion that if the powers that be latch on to something like that that works like that, they might want every juice to be like that. And we're at just that point in the whole cycle where we're talking now about the implementation of the TPD, it's bad enough that they've limited it to 20 milligrams. It's bad enough that they've got all these other bloody senseless bits of legislation coming through with it, and yes, it was rubber stamped by a transport committee, for God's sake. <laughs> um, if they then decide to take the vapour away, what are you left with? That would just annoy me. Yeah, I, I think it's a, a fair question. I think it's a fair question. A good point that you make. And I think... There's me on screen. I prefer my juice, obviously. But uh, it's because I mixed it the way I like it. Mm. But uh, yeah, there you go. So we did that. We did that. Um, it's nearly time to go, you know. Is so, it? Yeah, but before we do, I'm just going to flash up on the screen the uh, weekly EFVI league table. It's not a competition, remember, Dave? Really? But we're third currently. That's not good enough. Uh, we've gone ahead of the Germans. We've actually got uh, just about 1,600 signatures less than the Germans. Oh, good. Which puts us on 22.4%. Uh, Denmark still second with 25.18% and Finland uh, try not to sing the Monty Python song in my head uh, is currently at 41% yes so uh, obviously they've got a smaller target but uh, it's still ticking along Dave it's, it's doing reasonably well I think that we might have um, 
we've got to the stage where we've exhausted sign ups from forums and stuff like that. Yeah. And now we've got to get out into the general public. Which uh, I know you've been doing, but I won't expect won't ask you to elaborate on because I dare say you'll mention it tomorrow night, will you? No, I don't mind elaborating at all. I mean I've been out round Can't right there because it's ten o'clock. Oh right, fair enough. <laughs> But he did. He's been doing his bit. I have. So. And getting out and getting signatures. <laughs> hey. Don't tell me why. <laughs> it's that time. Dave, can I say thank you very much for joining me again? No problem. Always a pleasure, never a chore. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks to everybody for watching. Uh, we'll see you next week. Same time, same place. Where's the credits? There they are. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box.